Welcome everybody to Extreme Power No Handling Autocross and today we're dealing with the 1972 Mercedes-Benz 300 SEL now this has a 975 horsepower, 834 pounds feet of torque from a 6.5 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine and the car itself weighs 3,792 pounds and it can do 0-60 in 5.539 seconds, 0-110.524 seconds going on to a top speed of 199 miles an hour so yeah with this uh, recent European versus uh, American muscle car rivalry uh, the European side have had really only sports cars representing them so far with the likes of Lamborghini Miura, Ferrari 365 GTB slash 4 and the Aston Martin V8 Vantage so I thought we'd give a uh, more uh, you know bigger more of a less sporting kind of car to go but it should have uh, you know plenty of things going for it because it's got plenty of power the acceleration is decent for a car that you know still has uh, standard handling up uh, parts on it and uh, yeah never know the weight actually might play a part in actually helping the car handle better more weight might equal better grip so uh, yeah thought I'd just go for a different angle with this uh, episode so let's see what this car can do because even though the last three cars have done fairly decently They've still yet to reach the heights of the Corvettes or at least the Dodge Dart Hemi Superstock. So I uh, thought I'd try something different and see if that would pay off. Now obviously this car does weigh a fair, fair bit and it's quite a large car. It also has plenty of power. And the car itself had a V8 originally so there's nothing new up front or anything like that. Apart from the turbos so... It's all pretty much familiar to the car, obviously, outside of the extra power. But the car itself still had plenty originally at 300 horsepower, so it's only about three times as much. A bit of understeer there. And torque was pretty hefty on that on the stock version as well, so there's not, I don't even think there's twice as much torque as it had originally, so... Yeah, it's not out of the realm of its capabilities, I don't think. Just gotta learn how it handles and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a good time out of it. It's a fairly decent first lap, 1 minute 4 seconds, 0.531. Now this being a more ordinary kind of vehicle, it's going to be more suitable to the kind of conditions that we're exposing it to, unlike the, you know, the sports cars, because any Miura, for instance, was ever designed to be taking a jump like on this course has at speed, so a car like this, you know, and for more day-to-day -day kind of thing is going to be more suitable, and as you can see, with that lap time, I was right, 1 minute 1.128, which means it is quicker than uh, the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, despite this car having uh, a bit more in terms of weight and a bit less obviously uh, sporting. Way more controllable than the other three cars so far. Yeah, it does have its oversteer issues here and there, but on the whole, it's a lot more controllable. Brakes are actually fairly decent as well for such a uh, old car. Trust it to be up to the Germans to uh, show up, you know, the Americans. It's 
We've had the British with the Aston Martin and uh, two Italian cars, and uh, even though they did fairly well, they have beaten several of the muscle cars. They haven't come as close to the Corvettes or the Dodge Dart like this one has. Final lap to try and get some improvement out of that time. Well, that's by far the closest we've had so far. In fact, that has not only just beaten all the other muscle cars, that the, uh, that's the Aston Martin uh, V8 van. Oh, sorry, I didn't really look at the time. One minute, one minute point zero two seven. Not only has it beaten all the other muscle cars, that the likes of the Aston Martin, the Ferrari, and the Lamborghini, but beaten with likes of the Ford Falcon, the Chevrolet Camaro, the Ford Mustang Boss V02. But it has also beaten both the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray and the Corvette ZR1. And it's by far the closest car we've had to the Dodge Dart uh, Hemi Superstock, which was at a time of 58.258. So we're only we're less than two seconds behind that car, which is really, really impressive, especially for a car like this, which is as large and as heavy and as unsports-like as you can imagine. But it's managed it, and uh, yeah, that's purely because it was so much more controllable than the other vehicles. Yes, it had its overseer issues at the time, and yeah, we did crash into a couple of walls, but outside of that, it was really, really rather good. Uh, it handled the power perfectly well, uh, kept it uh, out in check the, at the rear end, didn't have really any one of many troubles at all, and even the brakes were pretty damn solid, and the suspension wasn't as wally as you would expect from a uh, car from 1972. So, uh, yeah, and not only has it beaten uh, the, those two Corvettes, but it's also beaten the uh, Teradyne Gurkha, the Toyota Super GT, the Ford SVT Cobra, and the Volvo H50R, and the Nissan Skyline GTSR as well. So, yeah. Really, really impressed by that. I really did not expect it to be that far ahead of the other cars. I was hoping it would be uh, quicker than the other three cars that we've had on this uh, European versus American muscle car rivalry, but for it to be more than you know 1.6 seconds ahead of the Aston Martin V8 Vantage is incredibly impressive. And uh, yeah, kind of makes me want to try out some other uh, German cars from around this time, though we don't have all that many, unfortunately. But there is one other or maybe two others that I could try out, but yeah, that is really, really impressive. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.